Okay, so <laughs> here's the video that my other videos have been leading up to. Um, yeah, I've been waiting to do this video for quite a while. And after I do this, and I'll be able to put this room into a usable state where I don't have a bunch of TVs set up next to each other. <laughs> I'll still have TVs in here, but yeah, it'll be better. But anyway, um, yeah, so this, so this video, I'm going to go more into the differences between the Trinitron and the Mitsubishi and actually test with gameplay. Um, I wanted to do the calibrations I did before because I think it's important to have everything kind of on the same uh, level playing ground. So yeah, I calibrated these three TVs. And then this JVC over here um, is just a uh, this is just the regular settings that come out of the box. This is a JVC from 2002. Uh, Vizio from I don't know what year. Uh, yeah, this is a 4K TV too. This is a, a Trinitron from 2000. And then this is a Mitsubishi CRT from 1997. Oh, and then over here we have a Toshiba, which is from 2005, which I'll uh, hook up later. Uh, but yeah, anyway... Um, yeah, I think this will be a pretty good uh, test here. Uh, I also, uh, just to, um, yeah, just to explain here. So, um, I am using monster cables everywhere I can. Uh, I don't think, oh my goodness, they're also really tight, but I don't think monster cables are necessarily, um, you know, like, well, they are, they probably are the best, but I think you can get good qualities out of others too. But just like, like this one, for example, let's see if I can get to focus here. There we go. So yeah, you can see see how there's all those pins in there. Um, yeah, S Video does not use that many pins. <laughs> yeah, um, S Video has like three pins, I think. I don't know something like that, but yeah, I think that these monster S Video cables, though, they uh, they use all the pins. So like you know, they make sure they have their RGB cover, their composite. Uh, you know, audio, everything, and then I think they probably just cancel out the signals that they don't use just to make sure it's a clean, um, it's a direct signal. Uh, whereas, like, let's go up here. I'll show you what the uh, official S-Video cable looks like. Here it is. This is the official S-Video cable from Nintendo. Let's see if I can get it to get light to show in there. Yeah, can you see those pins in there? So there's just three pins. Um, yeah, so they're, uh, yeah, so yeah, they, they just don't put pins on the signals that they don't use. And to tell you the truth, um, in testing out this cable compared to the Monster S video cable, I really haven't been able to tell a difference. I think I'll do another video where I look more closely at it. I've been able to tell a big difference on some third party S video cables, <laughs> that's for sure. But yeah, as far as the official and the Monster video, I Personally, I haven't been able to tell too big of a difference, but yeah, just for the sake of going overblown on everything, though, I'm going to use monster cables on everywhere I can. So yeah, this is the <laughs> this is the Super or, well, yeah, Super Nintendo, but also N64 uh, monster cable. Um, yeah, it's super thick, super well insulated, and then so I have it going into this switcher box, and then going out of the switcher box, I have just monster cables galore everywhere. <laughs> going into the different TVs and yeah basically everywhere I could use a monster cable I did um yeah and I I but again I wouldn't go out and spend hundreds of dollars on these cables um I I I got most of mine either for free people gave them to me or um I bought them at a second hand store uh for like a dollar each so because you know people are they upgrade you know, the flat screen TVs and they throw away their old expensive analog cables or give them away. So yeah, that's how I got most of mine. Except this one I actually did buy brand new. This is the Wii Monster Cable. Um, yeah, I even found a, uh, uh, this is what I have plugged into the Switch. So I even found a, a HDMI Monster Cable, <laughs> which, yeah, I mean, I guess it's probably better than anything, but and then out of the out for the switch audio too, I have a monster cable uh, for the that, that takes a 3.5 mil, millimeter uh, uh, audio jack and turns it into stereo. Um, but yeah, and then but you can see here, so I'm converting the switch uh, HDMI to VGA, so then I can convert it to S video over here. Um, yeah, which is also a monster cable. But yeah, but like the VGA cable isn't a monster cable just because I don't have a VGA monster cable, and I don't even know if they make them. So. 
Anyway, but where I can, I've used monster cables. Even this power adapter is a monster cable power adapter, um, which just provides clean power to, so like I got the Mitsubishi TV hooked up here. I think this is the Trinitron. Then 64 is hooked up here. Um, yeah, the the switcher, the switch. Um, yeah, and then, and then like these TVs though, these are just hooked up to another adapter over here because, um, yeah, I don't, uh, they were, it was just closer. But I've actually noticed, uh, like, power, having clean power is, oh, excuse me, having clean power is pretty important because, uh, yeah, I, I actually, one time I bought a cheap GameCube power adapter and I could, it was, I could see a noticeable, um, in fact, I think I still have it, but I could see a noticeable, sorry, my uh, video ran out of time. <laughs> Uh, while I was telling the story, but yeah, anyway, this is a first party GameCube adapter, but I had bought a third party one, and I remember it just said like GameCube power, and like GameCube was two words, and yeah, it was like all in, written in big font. But anyway, uh, when I used that uh, power supply on the GameCube uh, and then plugged it into the TV, I could see a noticeable, um, like a lot of noise in the composite picture. Uh, so yeah, clean power is really important, so, which is why I'm going to be using the monster, um, uh, power strip that I showed, so, yeah. Let's see that up here. Yep, so yeah, clean power. And, I don't know, I think if you have good power supplies, I don't know how, how necessary this is, but... I like can see here I got it for five dollars at a thrift store, so yeah, you know, you can find monster stuff for a cheap price. I think it's worth it, but otherwise, you're probably okay with uh, just other high quality cables. So yeah, anyway, let's uh, go on to the first test. Okay, so let's start here with uh, Super Mario 64, uh, just to get a good uh, baseline here. And uh, yeah, holy cow, look at that. <laughs> It's actually showing up here on this 4K TV. So this is a 240p signal. Uh, it's going in through a composite into this uh, switcher. You can see the monster composite or uh, S video cable up there. Uh, yeah, and then uh, it's going into S video on both of these TVs. And then this TV doesn't have S video. It only has composite components. So I just have it hooked up to composite. And I just had it on, and I turned on this game, and look at that. It's actually showing up now. It is um, interpreting the uh, the color signal is black and white, obviously, so that's not correct. So it's just ignoring the <laughs> the color signal. Like, so in the composite, uh, on the composite signal, if this is like, I don't know, so on the first part of the composite signal, um, it, that's where it tells uh, like the, the luma, you know, how bright the screen is supposed to be, basically the black and white signal. And then after that, they, uh, they put the colors, um, in the composite so for whatever reason it's working and it's picking up the luma signal on this composite signal I, I i'm really surprised it's actually picking up um i don't want to turn off the tv because <laughs> i think it'll probably go away because i've seen it do this before and then i turn off the tv and turn it back on it doesn't work anymore so let me just push pause and see if i can figure out what the re what it thinks the resolution is okay so i was able to find it under since system information you can see here, it does think that the resolution is uh, 480i. Um, so yeah, it is It is still incorrectly interpreting the uh, the 240p signal, but that's to be expected on probably really any TV. Because yeah, 240p isn't really a, a standard per se, it's more of like a cool trick. Um, yeah, <laughs> anyway. Uh, but yeah, so uh, let's go in here and that'll be cool. I guess we can actually yeah, and then this is hooked up to composite as well. Um, yeah, let's go into this game. Oh boy, wow. So even like on this screen, yeah, like I calibrated this TV and I calibrated this one the same way. And yeah, this one is just so much brighter than this one is. Like, it's not even funny. Even this JVC is, is really bright. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
<laughs> yeah, because I mean, I don't want to, because, so basically if you saw the other video in the 240p test suite, there's a part where, um, uh, in fact, maybe I'll try to pull that up real quick and I'll show you. Actually, I'll show it after this because I'm afraid if I try to pull it up, then it's not going to, or this black and white thing is going to go away. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second. But yeah, we'll show what the skin looks like first a little bit. So yeah. But yeah, this screen is definitely a lot darker. Maybe it's because, you know, people like the darker blacks. I know that these, uh, these Trinitrons, well, this, this model in particular, um, it has a, uh, oh, let me, let me, pull up and see what it's called hold on okay yeah so this Trinitron has stuff uh, like it has an auto white balance uh, dynamic picture processor um, yeah and they do say that you know these the Trinitrons do have really good black levels so I I think it's like I'm kind of inclined to think it's by design that the screens a little darker um, but yeah it's I don't know just like comparing it to other CRTs it, it doesn't have that pop effect uh yeah these ones are they really pop out of the screen um let me turn up the volume just a tiny bit i don't know if you can hear it or not but not that the volume is super important but yeah yeah let's try going into here real quick i'm gonna set up my camera on the tripod okay actually i'm not gonna set up on the tripod because i want to go over here and get this tv too i think i'll set up on the tripod later but uh, for now i'm just gonna hold it and try to play with one hand Yeah, let's go in here. Okay, let's go into this star here. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, definitely, uh, like, comparing the two side by side, um, yeah, like I said before, yeah, the Mitsubishi just looks a lot brighter. Um, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like even, I don't know, the, the colors on the Mitsubishi look a lot more vibrant too. Um, this kind of makes me wonder, I'm gonna try pulling up, uh, this color thing. So, uh, yeah, let's see what happens when we raise the color a little bit on this TV. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, maybe it, yeah, maybe it brings it a little bit closer, but yeah, it's still just too dark, I'd say. Yeah, maybe I'll leave it up like that a little bit more since it looks, uh, yeah, a little bit more vibrant. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's keep running around here for a second. In fact, actually, I have a better idea. Let's go to a dark place. Oh, wait, not there. Let's go up here up these stairs. You can see how I'm playing the <laughs> controller with one hand. It's kind of, it's a little tricky. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, also the colors look a little different on the camera than they do on the, uh, in real life. Like Mario's, um, overalls, they look like light blue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I don't want to lower the ISO too much. I can try, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll try it at 100. Yeah, that looks a little bit more, I guess, accurate. Uh, it probably makes the rest of the screen a little bit dark, though. I'm just going to leave it at 200. Yeah, let's see what 400 looks like. Yeah, I'm just changing the ISO settings on my camera. <clears throat> or ISO, or however you pronounce it. Yeah, see, this is a darker area, and see, I don't really feel like I'm losing anything from looking at the Mitsubishi. Yeah, and actually, the color looks a little off now. <clears throat> Let's see. I'll just leave it at what it was. Oh, great. I just changed everything. <laughs> oh, brother. All right, hold on. I've got to fix this. Yeah, so actually, uh, before I go back and fix this to the way it was before, Let's just, now that I've reset the calibration, let's go back and just compare the screens now. So this is standard, just, you know, default out of the box. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's definitely brighter. 
Um, yeah, but like you can see like the colors now I think are a little bit off. Like this white is a little bit too white I feel like. Um, it might be the color space too. Let's try changing that real quick. Is this? Oh no, it is a neutral. Yeah, so it's the same color space. Yeah. Or color temperature. But like you can see up here too. Like it, uh, yeah, it just, it just looks a little different. And I think that might be the contrast levels being too high. Yeah, but it definitely does look brighter. But even so, like, like, the colors still, I feel like, pop out more over here. It's probably because, like, the brightness setting has been calibrated, and so then the rest of the colors pop out of the screen more. Whereas over here, this is probably... Yeah, so see, they have picture turned all the way... Well, not all the way, but they have it turned up quite a bit, and then brightness is halfway. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, it will, yeah, it, it, it can make the screen brighter, um, but then you lose some of the details in the dark area. So, yeah, anyway, I'm going to go back and, uh, let's go back and I'll fix this the way it's supposed to be. Okay, I went back and fixed it. Yeah, it actually wasn't too bad because I guess all I really calibrated last time was the picture of the contrast. So, yeah, it wasn't too bad to do that again. Yeah, so anyway. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, and then, yeah, you can see over here too. <laughs> it's still amazed that this is working. But yeah, let's try pulling up that uh, 240p uh, test suite again just to double check our um, black levels on these TVs. Okay, so I got the 240p test suite here on the Dreamcast again. Uh, we're just going to go into this uh, color bars test here. So yeah, so this is where we adjusted the contrast before, and that's really the only setting we changed on this Trinitron, uh, or pictures, what they call it. And so yeah, on this on this setting, or this uh, test, the column under one, this gray bar should be very barely visible. And that's definitely the way it is. Um, over here, I'd say it's more visible on this Mitsubishi, yeah, and see now comparing it, uh, except that Mitsubishi is already turned down all the way, so, oh, <laughs> hold on, let me put this, let's put this in uh, 480p, or 480i, so it will show up on this 4K TV, um, yeah, this one, yeah, so you can see on here too, yeah, you can barely see the column underneath uh, the one, there, so yeah. Yeah, and now, yeah, in this setting you adjust the contrast. Yeah, so I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, you can barely see it. Um, yeah, it is, I guess it is a little darker compared to these other TVs, like this one. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll raise the contrast just a little bit more on this, uh, Trinitron here. Yeah, whoops. There we go. Yeah, so it's uh, it's kind of hard to see with that uh, with the picture thing in the way. Let's try doing it about right there and see what that looks like. Yeah, so see now it's a little bit more visible. Um, yeah, it's about now I'd say yeah I say it's about the same. Yeah, so again, we're not looking at this one, we're looking at the one, you know, right underneath this one. So in the one column, you can barely see. And see now, yeah, you can still barely see it, but it's a little bit more visible than before. Um, yeah, and then same on that one. So yeah, I think they all look pretty much the same now. Yeah, and actually on the JVC, which I haven't calibrated yet, let's show that. Yeah, this one's actually quite a bit more visible. You can see the one there. In fact, you can even start to see the zero a little bit, so... Yeah, this TV probably needs to be calibrated too, but yeah, it's just the out-of-the-box settings on that one. So yeah, um, okay. 
Great. Well, let's go into another game now. All right. So now let's do a fun game. Oh, they're all fun, but here's a really cool game. This is a ROM hack of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And yeah, it's called uh, Zelda Nymphia's Adventure. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Take that out. Put it right there. Yeah, this game is very cool. If you... Oh, hold on. Let me turn this switcher off auto, just because... Yeah. Auto input off. Okay, there we go. Okay. Yeah, so black levels look pretty similar across these TVs. Okay, I'm hearing some weird stuff with the audio over here. I'm not entirely sure what that comes from. Let me see if I can wiggle the cables around and fix it. Hold on. Okay, so I switched out the cables and now the buzzing noise has gone away. So I don't know if it was the cables or just some plug-in I'm plugging back in. But yeah, anyway. Appears to be working now. Yeah, this game is really cool, by the way. Um, hold on, let me put this on the tripod, or tripod. Okay, I set this up on the tripod now. <laughs> this will be easier, let's see what the sound settings are. Stereo, great. Yeah, I have both of these set to stereo sound as well. Because, um, like, they can emulate uh, surround sound. But yeah, let's go in here, show you some stuff. Okay, so yeah. All right, now I'm going to show you something that I've noticed on this TV. Let's see, do you notice anything different about the two? I know that the Turnitron is darker. Um, you can, I think you can see it more on this ladder. Okay. All right, now, <laughs> no bias involved. What color is his tunic? To me, it looks black. Or is this actually red? And now, look, now this is the weird thing. When you're going up the ladder, Look, it changes color. It turns red. When you go down, it turns black. Now look, so see that's on this. So see, yeah, go up the ladder. It's turning red. And then on the Trinitron, it turns black when it's... So it's like the lighting condition um, is changing the way it looks. Whereas over here, see, it just stays red the whole time. And that's the way it is on the JVC as well. Um, yeah, and I'll actually... Uh, and. I'll, I'll show you, well, yeah, I'll show you some more tests on it. But yeah, I think that this might have to do with uh, that feature I was mentioning before. There's, the information's kind of scarce on the internet on this kind of stuff, but um, looking at the specs, this Trinitron does have something called um, auto white balance and also dynamic picture processor. So I don't know, maybe that's being put into play here. Um, but yeah, something's definitely going on here. And actually, I'll show you something else, too. Um, if you turn on the picture-in-picture -picture mode on here, with the remote. So, uh, let's see here, where is it? Hold on. There it is, PIP. Let's see, focus on that. Yeah, you see the PIP mode, so yeah, so I'm gonna push that. And now, if you notice, on this little, on the little picture-in-picture uh, -picture that came up, that it doesn't, the color doesn't change. Um, let me bring the camera closer so you can see it better. Let's see. Uh, whoops. Oh, I just changed something. Okay, hold on. Okay. There we go. So yeah, so you can see, so it's like the, the dynamic stuff isn't being added to the picture-in-picture -picture mode. Which means that it's not something to do with like just the way the Trinitron is looking at the picture. It's like it's not the original picture. There's definitely some processing going on here. You can see on the little screen. Uh, where's my finger? There it is. See, watch him when he goes up and down the ladder. It never, like it's his tunic is red the whole time. So yeah, it's uh, it's very annoying. <laughs> and actually I'll show you another spot. Like a lot of times the black details are just crushed. Uh, let me put this back on the tripod. Yeah, let me show you another part. Kind of play through this a little bit and you can see see what it looks like. Yeah, that uh, yeah, that dynamic um, 
what are they called again? I always have to look at it, I always forget. Uh, auto white balance and dynamic picture processor, which I assume are the culprits. Um, yeah, it really, like over here it looks okay, but <clears throat> yeah, when it gets, when the screen, when I think when, uh, when it seems like it happens the most when there's like a lot of contrast between white and black uh, areas. And I've actually read um, that on, I think on later Trinitron Vegas, you can actually turn off that um, auto, uh, what's it called again, auto white balance or dynamic picture processor. Uh, you can turn that off in the service menu. I was looking, I looked everywhere. Oh, by the way, the Gorons have turned into uh, Dodongos <laughs> in this game. I don't think, I don't know if they really, I don't know. There aren't Gorons in here, so maybe they did turn into Dodongos. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, anyway, so on later Trinitron models, uh, you can, uh, um, I think you can turn that off in the service menu, but I've been all over the service menu in this thing. I don't see, I can't see it anywhere. I've also tried adjusting the sub brightness in the service menu and that kind of alleviates the problem a little bit, but then basically you have to decide if you want it to look good in, um, when it's in like it's normal mode or when it turns into this, uh, dynamic, uh, mode. So yeah. Anyway, now now here's something else that's not related to that mode, but, well, at least I don't think it is, I don't know, it's hard to tell, but if you look in here, so this is one thing that these, I think just, I don't know if it's just the Vegas in general, or Trinitrons, it might be the flat screen, I don't know, I've read different things, different opinions, but you can see this looks a lot, like the blacks do look deeper on this TV, compared to the curved screen over here, um, it's, yeah, it, it doesn't look as dark and... Uh, menacing and like that is supposed to be you know all black and it I and it's just because uh, these TVs I can't remember exactly what they have but they um, Sony did something to them where it it reflects more light and so it can give you deeper blacks uh, I can't remember if it was the flat screen or the film that they put on the glass um, yeah I can't remember yeah there's another area over here I wanted to show you that um, yeah, this this is. I'll show you the place where I first noticed something weird happening with the uh, that uh, dynamic uh, or the auto white balance in the dynamic picture processor. Oops. All right, this part's tricky. Yeah, this game is so cool. Like they they completely redid a bunch of assets in here, and like look, they put like Gerudos <laughs> in the Kuroki Forest, or uh, not for Kuroki Forest, the Karaoke Village. How do you pronounce it? All right, turn around. There we go. By the way, the arrows were like super hard to get. <laughs> so hard to get the arrows on this game. But then when you get it, it's like so satisfying. Yeah, I'm using that uh, custom control stick I made too, by the way. Oh, something happened with the signal. Oh, it's probably the switcher. The switcher sometimes resets. Ah, well, anyway, what I was saying is I made this uh, custom control stick. Um,. Yeah, I think, I can't remember if I talked about it before, but basically I soldered new parts and took one of the um, cheap uh, GameCube style control sticks you can buy on Amazon, eBay, took it, took it all apart, made my own PCB, and, uh, well, I didn't make it, I ordered it, and then I put, uh, yeah, soldered parts on and bought a better potentiometer for the joystick, and yeah, it wasn't my design, it was a, um, a it was a German, um, engineer yeah he goes by the name of micro uh but yeah he used to make these but he stopped making them so he just put his designs online and told people what parts they need to buy if they want to make it i don't know if anyone else has ever made one of these before i, I might be the only one besides you know the original engineer but boy this stick is good you, you saw how i did that um how i was able to shoot really quick 
And not that I'm like the greatest player either, but yeah, the sensitivity is awesome on this stick. But anyway, let me fix this uh, connection problem. All right, we're back in business. So, yeah, this is where I first noticed something was off on this Trinitron. Because I was, yeah, I was playing it. In fact, let me turn off the lights real quick. I might be able to see it better. All right, the lights are off. So, like, like this is the perfect example right here. Like... Look at the difference here, like it, his tunic looks black and you can see on the little, um, like the little picture down here, like it looks the same as the Mitsubishi. Um, and it's not just, and it's not just the Mitsubishi in the little picture down here too, like I, like on other CRTs it's like this too, like, uh, it, whoops, this thing's plugged in, okay. You can see on the JVC as well, same thing, it's red like it's not black it's supposed to be red so there's some sort of digital processing or something going on with this uh, Trinitron Wega um, yeah it's yeah it's really unfortunate and I have not been able to figure out how to turn it off so yeah and you can see so like when I run around here then actually the red turns red again and it looks normal ish it still looks a little dark I'd say but so maybe it's still okay now this is something interesting too so you can see that the let's see let me turn back around this way so you can see the effect it's in full effect right now his tunic looks dark now when I hold down the Z button and it, it will bring the black bars on the top and bottom of the screen watch this look at that <laughs> it's like it, it tricks the the dynamic uh, picture processor or the auto white balance whatever it tricks it into uh, I don't know it just tricks it into turning off but then see as soon as you let go and those bars go away then it then it goes back it's like it's it's like you can make it flash like the game is not supposed to look like this and you can tell on the like on the Mitsubishi or even in the picture and picture on the on the same Trinitron yeah it's it's a big problem and that's Honestly, that's my biggest issue with this Trinitron TV. Um, and that was my biggest disappointment when I started to notice this. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. It happens of quite a bit. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, I was super excited about this TV. But, yeah, not, any, not anymore. <clears throat> now, uh, one thing I'm going to... I'm thinking about trying to do is I'm going to try to get a... a the FV310 model, um, yeah, and I've I've read that you can turn off this mode, I don't know, like I said, information's really scarce, it's hard to find information on this kind of stuff, but I've read that you can turn off a mode that sounds like what's happening here on that model, so, um, yeah, I am going to try to do that <laughs> if I can get my hands on one of those but until then I'm just gonna oh I got caught until then I'm just gonna enjoy my Mitsubishi yeah now see now actually when the lights are off you can see the black um, the black actually looked the same on both uh, TVs so yeah it's it's really just um, these TVs Sony did an excellent job at designing them and reflecting uh, ambient light Oh boy, I don't want to fight these guys right now. Seriously, this game is so cool though. There are so many cool things in this game. But yeah, let's go and... I think I'll do maybe a more gameplay of this later. But yeah, let's go to a different test, different game. Alright, so now we're going to try out some uh, Switch games. So I got my Splatoon 2 Pro, uh, Pro Controller. Sorry. Here. Alright. Okay, I was just watching some uh, general conference here. It was really good. All right, let's go. Okay, so, so let me take this off the tripod. Okay, so yeah, um, yeah, and then obviously it works in here. And then I decided to do this uh, Toshiba from 2005 now. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I thought it'd be fun to go into Super Mario 3 All Stars. Oh, um, by the way, that reminds me. So, okay, so there is one really cool thing about this Trinitron. Um, so you, it actually has a, it has a, oh, 
think my dog's coming in. Hey! <laughs> yeah, so it has a uh, um, 16 by 9 enhanced mode. So when you turn this on, look at that. It actually makes um, like the switch or any widescreen uh, signal the right aspect ratio. And not only that, but it does something uh, really cool called uh, uh, vertical uh, compression. So it actually um, makes the resolution uh, higher in this area of the screen. So like it takes the resolution of this black, this black area and basically like squishes it all into here. So yeah, it looks really nice. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you can see over here that the Mitsubishi doesn't have that, obviously. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's go into Super Mario 3D All-Stars here. Oh, that's right. There's an update. Yeah, they fixed the camera controls and stuff. Yeah, okay, let's see how long this will take. Okay. Whoa, that was fast. <laughs> wow. All right, let's see how long it takes to update. Whoa, that was super fast too. Man, the Switch is a fast console. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I pushed pause on the video. <laughs> it actually took like two minutes to download and then like 10 seconds to update, which is still actually really fast for an update. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, so see, it looks, that looks really good. This is again still going through S video on these two. This is composite and this is composite. Oh, you know what? I might as well fix the aspect ratio on this TV too real quick. Hold on. There we go. Fix the, fix the aspect ratio. So now this TV has the right aspect ratio. This one too. This one is stretched vertically. And this one too. But actually, to tell you the truth, like when you're playing, you don't really notice it too much. It's only like side-by-side -side comparison that you notice it. Um, but yeah, and actually I'm just noticing too. So, there, so these CRTs, they have overscan. Um, so yeah, it's it's actually cutting off part of the uh, signal here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down into uh, settings. And then, uh, yeah, let's go clear down here to uh, TV settings. Um, yeah, I have it sound 480p as well, so it works with this uh, com uh, component to this video adapter. Um, but yeah, let's go down to screen size. Put it down as far as we can go so we can see more of the, the stuff. All right, there we go. Yeah, let's go into Super Mario 64 since that's what we went into before. Yeah, so you can see oh, it's so cool that it can do this. I really wish this Mitsubishi could squish it all down like that. But yeah, but again, if you're not looking for it, then you don't really notice it either. So, yeah. All right. Oh, um, let's fix the controls real quick. So let's see, where would that be? Options, maybe? Oh, yay, we can change all this stuff. All right, inverted, inverted, inverted. Great. Awesome. Cool. And actually, uh, I've got a GameCube controller here set up. I'm going to use this too. I was using the... Yeah, Pro Control before. Yeah, let's use a GameCube controller. Got it hooked up into a May Flash uh, third-party adapter, which has been yeah pretty good, I'd say, so far. All right, there we go. Yep, looks like it's working. Yeah. Yeah, now what I'm interested to see on this part, uh, so I have a friend, Leon, who's noticed this first, but on these 4K TVs, um, this intro is a little jittery. Let's see, maybe I'll compare it against these two. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but it looks a lot smoother on um, this TV compared to this one. Just like the panning movement. Yeah, by the way, I have not calibrated this TV yet. That's just straight out of the box as well. Well, actually, I don't even know. I haven't even looked at the settings on this TV, to tell you the truth. But yeah, so something else I can notice here, too, is... Uh, so you can see here it shows the black bars on the side, so it's it's actually recreating the aspect ratio of these older CRTs. And then this one... <laughs> uh, see, now this is really funny, actually, because... I wish there was a way to first off make it go like this, 
and then make it go like this. Yeah, because, uh, <laughs> and then over here, Mario's like super tall. But yeah, at least, at least that, at least it like, it's the right aspect ratio now on this TV. But yeah, just the switch. I really wish I had a four by three mode. It would make everything perfect. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, I, I have, this is the first time I tried using GameCube control on this. So before, well, actually, I take that back. I tried it before, um, before they did this update, but like the buttons were all mixed up because like B would be your attack usually. So let's see if it, oh, no, Nintendo, you were so close. Oh uh, no, this is supposed to be attack. All right. Maybe it's changed on sunshine. Ah, I was really excited there for a second. Yeah, but I mean, you can go into, you can like adjust. Oh, that's right. You can't just, okay, yeah. That's, yes, yeah, so that's what I did. So I actually used, um, uh, let me get past this. This song's, sounds annoying. But yeah, so I actually went in and I adjusted the controls um, with this uh, 8 bit um GameCube adapter. Uh, so yeah, it, it basically, oh yeah, it works for classic controllers too, but you can plug a GameCube controller into it and then it will treat it as a pro controller. Really cool. 8 bit makes some awesome equipment, by the way. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so I was able to remap the buttons so they work on the GameCube controller with that adapter. Um, but yeah, I would say, but yeah, when it's plugged directly into this, then you just have to get used to Y for attack instead of B the way it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, I'm kind of curious. I'm going to try out Sunshine after this to see if that's the controls have been fixed on that. Or if B is supposed to is attack on there. But yeah, let's look at this. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I like how the 4K TV looks on here. Looks pretty nice. This is uh, really the first time we've been able to see the 4K TV in something besides, uh, um, black and white. <laughs> but yeah, it looks, uh, it looks really good. Yeah. Now in real life, it actually does look blurry and it's probably just because I'm unnecessarily converting the HDMI to VGA to S video and then to composite and then it's going in here. So it, it is having a few conversions, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm feeling some input lag here too, which I wasn't feeling on the original 64 version, which also makes sense because I'll have to test. I don't, I don't think that this thing has too much input lag, but maybe it does. I don't know. But yeah, I'm definitely feeling it. Yeah, and actually I'm feeling it more on this 4K TV, which makes sense. So like, let's compare these two. Yeah, you can see it. Look at that. Can you see how Mario is, uh, how he hits, he jumps and he hits the ground before? And these are both composite, so. And this TV is in game mode as well. Um, yeah, this is the calibrated game mode I did in my last video. Uh, just for kicks, let's, uh, let's uh, change this one to just like your standard, you know, straight out of the box mode. <laughs> and see how much lag there is. Standard. And see there, it's just straight out of the box, not calibrated anything, just, yeah. So now let's see how much input lag there is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's, it's, look at that. It's like hilarious how much input lag there is. <laughs> Holy cow. Let's compare it against the Trinitron. Yeah, look at that, it's like... By the time Mario gets up in like at the height of his jump, he barely starts to jump on the 4K TV. That's so funny. Yeah, at least it is better on game mode. So let's turn it back to game mode before I, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, hold on. Actually, I was just curious going through these. I just want to see how much lag there is on Vivid. Yeah. Can't tell if it's more or less than standard. I think it's I, I think it actually might be more. <laughs> so this is like what you would see in the store demo. But anyway, let's uh, turn it back to game mode. 
standard computer game. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So see now there's there's still lag, uh, but it's much better, so much better. But yeah, anyway, as far as picture quality goes, I did not want to fall in the water. This is it's it's hard because I'm trying to do this with one hand again, so it's it's hard to swim with one hand. At least for me, it is. Yeah, but yeah, it, uh, this 4K TV does look really nice, though. Um, yeah, let's let's uh, let's get a little bit closer up, and we can. I can show you how it. It does still look a little blurry. Let's see here. Okay, this is my dog's favorite spot. Pushing button on the notes I don't want to. Okay. So yeah, can you so yeah, can you see that? So see it does look a little blurry. Let's see if I can turn Oops, I accidentally hit pause on my video, but yeah, let's turn Mario around. Oh I forgot to test the camera controls. Yay! Oh hooray! See look, this is the way it's supposed to be. Just on a side note, so see when you push right. It moves the camera guy right. Oh, except it's not going to do it here because I'm against the <laughs> the wall. All right, camera guy can't go through the wall. All right, so okay, so now you can see here when I push right on the C stick, the Lakitu flies to the right. Yeah, see that's the way it's supposed to work. Lakitu flies to the right. I'm controlling Lakitu with the right stick. That's why the original camera controls make sense. Hey, Lakitu, fly to the left. Okay, he's flying to the left. <laughs> like, that's that's the reason why the the camera controls were the way they were in the original game, you know, you know, quote-unquote, inverted. You know, that's not really what we called it back then. Um, but yeah. <laughs> You're literally controlling the camera. You're controlling Lakitu. Um, yeah, and it makes sense that way. <laughs> yeah, if you ask me, the other way is inverted. But yeah, anyway, let's go in here and uh, like, does like does it really make sense to say Lakitu fly right and then you push left to have him fly right? Like, does that make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to me. All right. Oh yeah, here's something I like to look at. This red carpet. Let's compare the colors on here. That looks really good. I'd say that the 4K TV has pretty good colors. This one, um, this TV, I haven't calibrated, but it looks a little washed out. Uh, I'm not sure if this Toshiba TV is just lesser quality. The red looks pretty good on the Trinitron. Yeah, I'd say it looks pretty good. Oh, wow. Yeah, the red looks really good on the Mitsubishi. Holy cow. Wow, yeah, I think my favorite red, the red is very deep on the Mitsubishi, holy cow. It's definitely my favorite. Um, yeah, Trinitron doesn't look bad either. 4K looks pretty good too, and then this one looks a little washed out. But one thing I can say about this TV, the uh, benefit to it is that since it's smaller, <laughs> yeah, it looks so crisp. Looks very, very nice. Yeah, and like and like, uh, oh yeah, it it looks, it 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 looks a lot better in real life too. But yeah, it's very crisp. It looks, yeah, very nice. Whereas this one's a little blurry. Um, yeah, that's right. That's what I was gonna show you. So, yeah, so you can see on Mario's face. Yeah, like it looks fine, but it's a little blurry on this TV. Like the M on his hat. When you come over here. Um, yeah, it looks more defined. And this is still like composite. Now let's compare it to S video. Wait, hold on, don't sleep. Yeah, so see, so there's composite on the 4K. And then here's S video on the Trinitron. Yeah, see how much sharper that looks? Uh, the difference between S video and composite is very noticeable. And then here's S video on the Mitsubishi. Yeah, again, very sharp. Very nice looking. 
Um, yeah, and I've uh, yeah I've I've actually looked at the difference between S video and component. I don't notice as much of a difference between S video and component compared to S video and composite. Um, oh, you know what? That reminds me. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's take, okay, oh man, I just remembered, okay, yes, component. All right, I, okay, after I do, we're going to do Mario Sunshine first, and then after that, uh, I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you it. So I, so this, this uh, switcher is really cool. It can actually convert the S video signal to component. Um, so what I'm going to do, because obviously N64 doesn't do component, but I can take this video signal through this monster cable, and then it will convert it to a uh, component. And then actually, that uh, dynamic uh, stuff that I was talking about, it doesn't apply to the component input on this. And then, and actually in the service menu, there are different component uh, controls compared to uh, like S video and composite controls. Um, so yeah, actually, I'm going to show you that first before we do Mario Sunshine. So yeah, Mario, you can just sleep for a second. Yeah, let me, I, I'm going to turn this back on. I'm going to get back to the spot we were before. And then, yeah, let's let's look at that real quick. Okay, here we are again. So yeah, that, um, oh yeah, let me change the aspect ratio. So that's another thing I don't really like about this model because it doesn't have, like, well, so it is super cool that it has this, um, what it called six by nine enhancement, but what I don't like about it is that you have to go in and automatic or uh, manually change it every time. Whereas the later models of the Trinitron Wegas, it would supposedly do it man or uh, automatically. That's what it says. I've never tried it to see how well it works, but yeah. Anyway, so this is our S video. Remember, so uh, where when we go up the ladder, it's red, and then when we go down the ladder, it's black. And then you can see on here it doesn't change. Same as over here, it doesn't change. It's only on the Trinitron that it's applying that uh, auto white balance or dynamic picture processor. Um, but anyway, now let me show you something really cool here. I am going to switch the input. Um, so this is TV video setting. I'm gonna switch it over to video four. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, the colors are pretty washed out on this. Like I said, component has um, different settings, but yeah, so anyway, when you go up and down the ladder though, uh, well, maybe I was lying. I could have sworn I saw that it wasn't affected, but yeah, I, mean, I guess I guess this setting is present on component as well. Let me try going to that light area real quick. I'm gonna warp over there. So that's another cool thing about this game. If you run around this guy, five times uh, so. maybe it was uh, I must have done it wrong hold on maybe it's not five times Let me jump back up here no oh, yeah I think it was five times yeah so let's see one two three four five and then you have to talk to him and then he says there's still no exit here and he's talking about back here and then all you have to do is you have to run and you have to r knock your head against where the exit's supposed to be and then it'll warp you to wherever you want to go in the game so here we go i'll show you how this works all right you can see it warped us to the right spot yeah thanks cool trick <laughs> I'm just, I'm totally keen, by the way. <laughs> That's, uh, I just paused the video. Oh, whoa, what just happened? I just paused the video and then ran here. <laughs> but this is a trick. You can fly, you can fly up on the roof like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway. But, <laughs> don't you remember, though, like, uh, in the, whoops, playing in the, like, in the playgrounds back in the day, like, you'd say, like, oh, you know, run around the, you know, the pillar, you know, in the mirror room in Mario 64 five times, you know, do ground pounds and all this stuff. And then Luigi will jump out and you can play as Luigi. None of that stuff is true, but <laughs> it's the kind of stuff that we would believe as kids. But yeah, here's our other place that we were looking at. So 
Yeah, never mind. Yeah, so I I seen I, I thought that I remembered it not applying to component signal, but actually does. So, yep. The auto white balance and the dynamic picture processor applies to component as well. So, yeah, what I said before is still valid. And by the way, it looks it looks really dim on component on this TV, but I think it's just this switcher that's uh, dimming the S video signal. And then over here, this is still the S video signal uh, in the picture in picture. So. Yeah, anyway, uh, let's go back to uh, Mario Sunshine. So another thing you do is if you hit this wall right here, five, and then when I hit it one more time, then it will switch and this game will turn into Mario Sunshine. Okay, see? Oh, actually, I guess it switches to Mario 64. Hmm, interesting, it's probably because it's a 64 game. Oh, and also, if you notice on here, so this is now in black and white, which makes me wonder, maybe it was so dark before because there's something, because now this is 480i, and the other game was 480p, or sorry, 240p, so maybe the conversion, I don't know, is broken, because now obviously it's only going off the Luma. <sighs> I don't know. But anyway, let's change it back to um, S-Video. So, oh, not that one. There we go. Doesn't that look a lot better? All right, so now let's go into Mario Sunshine. I'm interested to see if the B button works like it did on the original game. Let's see, I'm gonna take this off the tripod now. Okay. All right, let's see if this still works. Oh, it does, nice. Yeah, I was under impressed uh, with the GameCube support on Mario 64. It, it, it really seemed like exactly the same <laughs> as before. So I kind of think they didn't really do anything for it. Because I, yeah, I did this before and yeah, it's not. I mean, you could already use a GameCube controller in any game. So anyway, let's go on to Mario Sunshine and see what happens. Yeah, so see, like, comparing, like, the Trinitron to the 4K TV right now, um, let's kind of see what this looks like. Oh, the Trinitron has, it's definitely darker, um, maybe dark, maybe deeper colors because of the black levels. This TV definitely looks blurrier. <laughs> Yeah, it looks a lot blurrier, and it is composite as well, so, but again, this TV doesn't have a S-Video, so, it's kind of what it is. But even so, like, um, like, just like, you, you saw in the other video, well, if you saw the other video where I calibrated this TV, um, yeah, it, uh, yeah, it just doesn't look as, like, the composite signal doesn't look as good on it as, yeah, as other TVs. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I had to choose between which one to play off of. I would probably choose this one to tell you the truth, though, just because it's it's like it's brighter and it's uh yeah because yeah I mean I calibrated both of the brightness settings so yeah but then if it's between the Mitsubishi and the 4K TV I would definitely go with the Mitsubishi. Um, well, besides that everything's like stretched out, so maybe that's... Yeah. <clears throat> besides that, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna actually have to start a file. I, like, I, I started this before, but it's like, since, uh, like, the camera controls were wrong, that's what really made me not want to play this game, was the camera, the camera controls, but now that it's supposed to, supposedly should be right, um, I actually might play this version now. Yeah, I have the original version too, though, so I don't know if uh, I don't know if I like this more than the original version. But wow, it looks really good on this TV. <laughs> wow, like really good. Let's get a little closer. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, I really like the way it looks on this TV. Um, yeah, although you can see there, like, the blacks aren't as deep on this TV. But again, I haven't calibrated it like I have the others, so... Yeah, so I'm going to try to, let's first off go to options. Okay, so yes, yeah, horizontal we want inverted. Vertical, inverted. Vertical flood, yes. Uh, Mario cam, oh, horizontal. Oh, we don't want the horizontal Mario cam inverted. Vertical, yes. Yeah, so, so this was actually normal on the original version. Yeah, because when you're in first person mode, like you still, you turn Mario's head to the left to look left, and then you turn Mario's head to the right to look right. But then you, but then it, but then you're looking up. So like on the control stick, I'll show you when we go out here. All right, let's try this with the GameCube controller now. <clears throat> All right, I'm really curious to see if this is working. So let's move Lakitu to the left. <gasps> Look, he's moving to the left. Let's move him to the right. He moves to the right. Uh, okay, that, I guess that's... I think that this was the other way on the other game, but I can't remember to tell you the truth, so... But yeah, the main was the left and right. Let's see what, uh, how do you go into first person? Hold on. Okay. Y is how you go into first person. Let's do that. And let's see. This is kind of off the off the topic of this game, video, but yep, looks good. Yeah, yeah. So see, that's the way. See how he moves his head to the right or to the left, and then yeah, this is actually really good because it see move to he moves his head to the left, and then you're looking to the left. You move to the right. You move to the right. But then. Like you, if you're gonna look down, like you turn your head this way, and so that's the way you push the control stick. And then when to look up, you're you're pushing the curl, uh, you're you're moving your head up like this. So you're pushing back. Like I don't know, it just makes sense to me. But anyway, yeah, I guess a lot of I guess a lot of gamers don't agree with me, but a lot do as well. So yeah, this looks really nice though. Um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I still kind of prefer this one though, out of the out of all the TVs. And this is still my least favorite. I'm really disappointed. And look, you can see, look the yeah the the dynamic uh, white balance stuff is happening on here too. See Mario's back all looks uh, black. It looks like he's wearing a black like a black suit or something. Whereas over here, you can see it's the right color. Over here, it's the right color. Over here, it's the right color. Man, Mario sleeps a lot. But yeah, it's happening on the 480i signal as well, so... Ah, really unfortunate. But yeah, I think that's pretty much all the tests I wanted to do, though. Um, but yeah, let me know what TV uh, is your favorite out of these uh, four, I guess, yeah, four, well, five, really, because we had that one on before as well, uh, yeah, and again, I'll put the, um, in the description, um, I'll put, uh, the model numbers for all of these, and, uh, oh, that's right, there was one more thing I wanted to show you guys, um, a VHS movie, yeah, because, uh, because maybe this dynamic stuff will actually look better on a movie, so, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, I've actually got a movie right here, I think, yeah. This is the, yeah, Beauty and the Beast. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and try that real quick. Uh, so yeah, there's actually a shortcut to turn on your... Oh, I forgot to check the B button, too. Let's see if that works. Oh, it does, good. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So see, they optimized the... They optimized the GameCube controller for Mario Sunshine, but probably just for Mario Sunshine, since apparently... Well, yeah, the B button wasn't correct on uh, Mario 64, unfortunately. Oh, the rumble works! Hey, the rumble works! Oh, nice. I don't think the rumble worked worked on uh, Mario 64. Um, let's see. Let's try going into Mario... Wow, I just did that with one-handed. <laughs> That's pretty cool.
All right, let's uh, let's go back into Mario 64. Sorry, I just want to see if the rumble works because I don't remember. I'm really doubting it will. <clears throat> so actually, if you're going to play Mario 64 with the GameCube controller, you probably will want to use uh, this 8 video adapter I was telling you about. Yeah, because the rumble does work on that as well. Oh man. I'm gonna, I, <clears throat> once I fix this room and like actually move these TVs and like put a couch in here and stuff. Oh brother, we're gonna have to watch this. Uh, actually there's a button combination, I remember to skip it. So you hold down X, oops, X, B, and start for three seconds. And then, yeah, and then it will, uh, it will skip the intro. So, okay, ready? One, two, three. There you go, pretty cool trick, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I hope you can tell when I'm kidding when I'm not. Sometimes I make jokes and people, like, they think I'm dead serious. <laughs> I'm not serious, I promise. But yeah, let's, uh, what was I going to test? Oh yeah, the rumble, so. Oh, brother. Yeah, they did not optimize this for the GameCube controls. So see, this should be the Z, and it's not. It's, it's R, so that means that Z is probably Z. Yep. Yep. No rumble. So yeah, they didn't optimize um, this game for the uh, the GameCube controller. Hmm, unfortunate. Oh well. All right. So uh, anyway, let's uh, turn on the VCR and test that. Okay. So let's go over here and do the VCR stuff. Again, this is kind of tricky. One-handed. Book of Mormon. Another Testament of Jesus Christ. Great book. Um, all right. Oh, this is really tricky. All right. Got my own old phone up here. Some interesting boxes. Yeah, this is like a retro room. It's like walking back in time 20 or 30 years. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and... I'm not entirely sure where this is right now, but let's just see what happens here. Yeah. Mitsubishi turned on first, by the way. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where this is. I hope I might need to rewind the tape. Oh, it's at the beginning. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we can watch some credits or whatever you call those things. Oh, wow. Something weird's happening over here. <laughs> only to movie theaters this uh, 1992 man. holiday season. These, the uh, Disney animated classic. Hold on, let me turn this Disney down a little bit. Turn down this one a little bit, too. This holiday turn season down this one. Disney Studios presents our so, okay, now this is the weird thing. So before I would blame this, or say possibly it's because, uh... Like S video being converted to composite, but now it's it's the VCR is composite, so now it's composite being converted to S video for these two. But this is just straight composite. <laughs> so I think what it is is because maybe I think that modern TVs have problems handling analog signals, and like VHS is pretty analog, and like just the way. Like the magnetic signals are stored on the tapes, they can be variable, and so yeah, it's probably just not. It's it's probably sending a composite signal that's just not used to, or that's not expecting. Yeah. Oh, it looks like it somehow changed the aspect ratio automatically. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't change that, but okay, whatever. I I don't know what's going on with these 4K TVs. All right, let's go in here and change the aspect ratio for this TV. Okay. Yeah. This looks pretty nice. Let's put this on the tripod so we can get some good viewing in here. There we go. Can you see that okay? Yeah, looks pretty nice. 
Be sure to stay tuned after Let's see. For a look at more special previews. I'm going to change my Disney settings on here for... Hold on. So it looks and correct. Now, our feature presentation. I think we had this on 100 before. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so... The black levels look pretty good. Let's see, let's change the white balance. There we go. Yeah, the, the black levels look really good on both of these TVs. I, you know, I think that this 4K TV is trying to interpret as black and white again, but since it's not like a clean signal, since it's a VHS, it's having a really hard time. Okay, wow. Oh boy, okay, hold on, I've got to hit pause here. I'm going to turn off the lights. Yeah, because I am a... Uh, also, I'm going to try to I try to turn off this TV, this 4K TV, and turn it back on because, yeah, it's, it's not what I'm looking for. Okay, hold on. Let me turn off the lights real quick. Okay, so the lights are off, and as you can see, well, I don't know how well you can see it, but, uh, yeah, you can, well, yeah, so this is the Mitsubishi. Oh, let me turn off my little tablet down here so it's darker there we go so yeah here's the and then over here is the trinitron actually maybe i'll keep that on because then you can see my finger uh it doesn't help yeah but over here on the right is a trinitron mitsubishi oh so actually so i turned off the 4k tv and then i turned it back on it's having problems <laughs> and i think i know why and then over here you have the little tv that's brighter but it's having a really big problem when it's paused because I think that when it's paused, it actually, um, the VCR outputs a 240p signal is my guess. And so, yeah, it's having a really hard time with a 240p signal coming from the VCR for the pause. Cause watch, I bet, well, hopefully when I push play now, let's see, there we go. Hopefully, it, yeah, see, yep. So it probably was 240p. Wow. I think that that might be because, um, oh, what do you call it? Because uh, when you push pause, you don't want this the screen moving up and down like it doesn't interlace. And so, yeah, you don't want it going up and down. Uh, and so, yeah, they probably do a progressive signal. So then it's when it's paused, it actually is um, just staying in place. That makes sense in my head anyway. Yeah, this looks nice. Yeah, these, uh, yeah the black levels. See, now when the lights are off, um, yeah, both of these TVs look almost identical, I'd say. And maybe it's because it's a movie too. So, you know, that um, automatic... Uh, brightness levels and stuff, the, the white balance, the dynamic white balance stuff. Um, yeah, maybe it's meant for videos and so it looks good on movies. Uh, because yeah, this looks pretty good, I'd say. Turn this back up a little bit. Yeah. Oh wow, this looks so nice. Yeah. Yeah, and this 4K TV is doing well now, so. And it's actually turned to the widescreen mode as well. Which I'm not sure why it ever turned off of it, but yeah. It was just in a weird state before. Yeah, watching TVs or watching a movie in the dark is uh, really cool. Yeah, I still have this picture in the picture open because it's it's just interesting to to see when that um, dynamic white balance is being applied and when it's not, since apparently it isn't ever applied um, over here. Yeah, see right here. I see the black levels look really good on this Trinitron. Um, they look good on the Mitsubishi too, I guess, but yeah, it just seemed like they were a little deeper on the Trinitron. All right, but now in this part, the colors are popping out more on the Mitsubishi.
Yeah. If I were to watch this, I would watch it on the Mitsubishi. You can also see the, um, you can see the the um, interlace uh, articles as well, because um, I I think that this this Trinitron is it tries to be so precise precise that it actually brings up a lot of the um, like inner foot interlace uh, like you can see the interlacing happening more on this TV. It's kind of jarring to tell you the truth. Whereas this one, to tell you the truth, it just looks it almost looks like a progressive image. It's really kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah, my grandpa gave me this TV. I'm really um, grateful he gave that to me. Yeah, let's uh, take this off the tripod and kind of look at some of the other TVs here. Yeah, so there's these ones, and then here's the 4K. And here we've got the... Oh boy. Yeah, see this one's a lot brighter, so we're going to have to... There we go. Let's see what that looks like, except now I'm going to have to... Uh, shutter speed stay. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it looks pretty good on this TV. Yeah. On the black levels, um, or when it's a black scene, you like it's brighter than the... The LCD screen. <laughs> so yeah, that's probably not the best. But you know, some people maybe like that. Maybe they like a brighter screen when it's black. I haven't calibrated this TV yet either, so uh, maybe once I calibrate it, it'll look better. Yeah. Let's see. Now we're gonna. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah, so I, no, it's kind of funny. I watched this movie, I've, I have I think I mentioned, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the other video I made, but uh, um, I watched this video, well, let me turn down the volume real quick before I tell this story. Actually, before we do that, let's, uh, let's test the sound between these two TVs. So, put this back on the tripod here. Let's just, let's, uh, yeah, let's check the sound between these two. So I, so before I started the video, um, I actually went in and uh, checked to make sure that they were on the same like volume setting, so they sounded about the same loudness. But yeah, let's just see which one sounds better. So I'm gonna mute the. So yeah, probably turn this one up just a tiny bit. So that's what the Trinitron, Trinitron sounds like. I don't know how well this will come through on the camera, but... Alright, let's mute the Trinitron. This is going to start singing. Okay, mute. Holy cow. The sound is so much better on the Mitsubishi. Um, yeah, oh, my video stopped there for a second. The sound is so much better on the Mitsubishi. There's, and it's probably because like it has, like you can see down here, like all of this, this is all speaker and there's another big speaker over here and it has a lot of bass too. Um, yeah, it sounds very good. Yeah, see, oh wow, it's it's such a big difference. The the Sony, yeah, the Trinitron. Oh wow, it's like it's super heavy, but it's not heavy because the speakers. I don't think <laughs> this this TV actually weighs 220 pounds. That's how much I weigh about. Um, yeah, so it weighs about as much as I do, and uh, yeah, but yeah, the sound is just so much better on this Mitsubishi. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Hello, oh, yeah. I'll change the white balance again, I forgot. Yeah, so, uh... Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good, I'd say. So, uh... Yeah. Let's, uh... Let's just do this one one more time. 
Yeah. Much better on the Mitsubishi. Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, so anyway, so what I was going to say was, um, so I've, you know, I've always watched this video, you know, Beauty and the Beast is on the VHS, but the other day on, uh, uh, on Disney Plus, I actually pulled it up to see what it looked like, and I was watching it on my phone, and my phone has an OLED display, and, you know, the phone is, it's, you know, digital, kind of like, uh, you know, this TV over here, and, uh, yeah, just like, just like seeing that digital signal, um, it was, it was like really, like it looked like a completely different movie, like everything looks so sharp on Disney Plus on my phone. And like, I, I just couldn't believe it, I just was not used to seeing that. And it didn't, like over here, like on the VHS it looks soft, and it, it just looks so different, like I couldn't believe it. But uh, anyway, that's kind of something you have to see to believe. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think that's uh, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to show on this video. So uh, yeah. So what I'm gonna do? So I want to originally do this video because um, this comparison video because I wanted to uh, to see if I wanted to put this Mitsubishi for. Um, uh, what do you call it? Turn this down a little bit. I wanted to... I wanted to... Uh, see if I wanted to put this Mitsubishi TV in like the... Um, the center of this room for like the center of the retro room. Or if I wanted to do this Trinitron. And yeah. I mean with all these t with all these uh, tests that I've done, I'm going to choose the Mitsubishi. You know, they're the same size screen. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna choose the Mitsubishi. Oh yeah, that's another thing too. No, never mind. I think I already showed that in the last video. Um, yeah, I showed this in the other video, but yeah, there's, on scrolling, on the, like, scrolling games, uh, this Mitsubishi actually has, uh, it, it really, or sorry, the Trinitron really emphasizes, uh, the curvedness of the tube. Um, and so yeah, you can actually see lines curve on here. In fact, I can show you that real quick. Um, let me turn on the color bars real quick. Okay, so here are the color bars. So yeah, you can you can see on here on this line, it's not completely straight. Like it kind of curves a little bit. Um, in motion, you know, you don't really notice it too much. But yeah, when you look for it, it's it's kind of another one of those things that once you see it, you can't unsee it. Um, whereas over here on the curve screen CRT, it it's, looks pretty straight. Um, same thing as the 4K TV and then this other curved screen, t uh, CRT. Uh, but yeah, I, um, yeah, I feel like, uh, this, these flat screen CRTs, they kind of come from an age when people were really excited, you know, about, you know, digital flat screens, you know, and, and so, uh, yeah, they started to make CRTs flat screens, but yeah, the flat glass um, in front of the curved tube just uh, kind of emphasizes the uh, curvedness that the tube is. Um, yeah, that's that's what I've heard anyway. Uh, but yeah, while we're here, we might as well look at the Sonic uh, thing real quick. Um, oh, let's see, it's back here. Is it this one? Yeah, now we're on the Dreamcast, so... Yeah, so, uh, yeah, let's see if we can, I showed this in the other video, but you can see, like, right here, like, the, it goes in and out when it scrolls. It's like it, it, it's warped here at the end. You can see those trees going in and out. Whereas over here on the curved glass, you can, I don't know, maybe you can still kind of see it, but it's, it's not as pronounced. It's pretty straight, I'd say. Then over here it's pretty straight, but it's kind of jumpy, like we were saying. Then over here it's kind of the same as the Mitsubishi. Um, but yeah, so uh, um, yeah. Anyway, so oh, and then I guess I can show this one too. You can see it here as well. You can see how it's like the walls bending. It's like it bends in like this. Yeah, and you can see it down here too. Whereas over here it's pretty straight. Yeah. Um, 
Let's see. But yeah, anyway, uh, so what I was thinking we could do now, uh, because, so I was thinking about it, I was thinking about just ending the video right here, uh, but actually, uh, I wanted to do one more, a few more tests, which this video is already long enough, so I'm going to make a, another, like a continuation, another continuation to these tests. Um, you can see I set up all these games here. So I actually want to test these TVs at their best. Maybe not this one. Um, I think, I don't know, we might not do that one anymore. But, like, I want to do this one. Like, right now this is composite. But obviously composite isn't the best signal for a 4K TV. It would be HDMI. So I want to hook the I want to hook the Wii U up to here and do HDMI. And then I want to, this one can actually do component. So I might as well use the component cables on the Wii and yeah, and see what that looks like. And then this, the best it can do is S-Video, which is why we did S-Video at the beginning. So anyway, that's going to be the next video where I kind of compare the best that each of these three TVs can offer uh, and see which one looks the best. See if it's still the Mitsubishi or... Yeah, because in this video... It was more of, okay, let's let's make these two the same, since the best this can do is S-Video, we'll do both these S-Video, and then this one's composite, because, yeah, it doesn't do S-Video. But yeah, I think that'll be good, and then we'll test out these games on them, and yeah, go into that more in the next video. Um, yeah, I think uh, maybe the last thing I'll do on here is I'm going to leave the S-Video up on here, uh, with the Dreamcast, but I'm actually going to turn on the Wii and go into the 240p, 240p test suite, and I just want to double check all the calibrations uh, because, yeah, I just want to make sure that I, you know, I have this right. Because I mean, this screen being this much darker than the others, um, maybe that's just the way it is. You know, like the LG OLEDs, when you go and look at them in a, you know, like Costco or whatever. Like, in the bright store, they do look darker than, like, <laughs> the Vizio TVs or the Sharp TVs or whatever. And it's just because OLEDs, um, they don't necessarily have as much brightness. But since they have more depth in the blacks, uh, they actually end up looking better anyway. So maybe that's what's going on with this Sony TV. You know, it has such dark black levels that it, uh, yeah, it just looks better. I did kind of notice that in the video too, uh, in the, what do you call it, um, the Beauty and the Beast that we were watching. But yeah, anyway, let me just, uh, I'm going to turn on the Wii real quick and just, I'm just going to check the calibration with the component cables, so hold on. Okay, here we are with the Wii. I actually still have it in progressive mode from when I was uh, calibrating this uh, 4K TV over here, so yeah. This is what it looks like. So if this ever happens to you, you have to try to... I can still kind of see what's happening on the screen, but yeah, you have to go into settings. You just have to set it to uh, interlaced. So yeah, let's go to screen, uh, TV resolution, and then standard OK. That should fix it. Yep, now it looks great. Now this is 4DI. <laughs> Yeah, not 480p. Alright, so anyway, let's go into this thing real quick. Let's see, let's get rid of this picture in picture. Okay. Alright, uh, let's see here. I'm going to plug in my trusty GameCube controller here. Okay. Oh, I had it in 60 by 9. Oh well. It's disabled on this anyway. Oh, and now we can actually do this in uh, 240p as well, which is good. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's go into test patterns here. And then let's, let's double check this one. So this is the contrast levels. Uh, I'm not going to go into super detail because we already did this in the other video, but yeah. Basically, these, um, the lines between the scan lines, the black lines, well, and the scan line should be the, the same as the the gray on here. So yeah, they should all be pretty much the same. 
I think they are. And NC, and, and you're actually supposed to lower the contrast uh, if they're not the same. Like if, if up here the, the scan lines are too big. But I think they look pretty well good. Okay, and then down here, this is the brightness. We actually might want to raise the brightness. I don't know. We'll have to see. But so basically, um, the one column under here should barely be visible. And see, and that's the way it looks right now. So I'll, just for kicks, I'll try raising the brightness because it is a different setting than the, um, what do you call it? The contrast. Let's try to raise it a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, see, now it's way too bright because not only can I see this one, but I can also see, like, clear down to low zero. So, yeah, let's turn that back down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now let's see what that looks like again. Yeah, see, to me, that's where you can barely see one. So, yeah, I I really, I just wanted to double check. This is going through, you know, component. And this is 240p going through component. Uh, it really doesn't get much better than that for doing these tests. And, yeah, it, it looks pretty good. So I I think I, I'm i going to I'm gonna say that probably these Trinitrons are just, um, they have such deep blacks that they probably have a, just a darker overall screen, kind of like an OLED display. Um, whereas when you're, you know, when you're looking at an OLED display, it looks absolutely stunning. But when you compare it side by side to, you know, one of the, you know, LCD screens that are in Costco, <laughs> you know, like one of the Samsung or the QLED Samsungs, you know, um, they they don't look as bright because, yeah, it's <laughs> there's a backlight behind them. Um, but yeah, but they but their colors aren't as deep either. So yeah, maybe that's what's going on here. In fact, let's uh, let's just go back and look at the color test on here. This is in 4DI, by the way, just so it works on this TV. Um, let's see here. Let's go to color, color bars too. So yeah, let's see what the colors look like on the Trinitron and then on the Mitsubishi. Yeah, see, it's definitely brighter on the Mitsubishi, but then if you, when you look over here, so you can see the one, yeah, I mean, the brightness, so is, you know, right there, that's, uh, yeah, I can barely see it, and it's at the same level it is, it is on this Trinitron, so, yeah, I think it's pretty good. So, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it like this, and then same thing with this TV. Yeah, so, and this one's obviously not calibrated, but yeah, that's just the way it's going to be. Okay, so anyway, I thought I'd just <laughs> end on this screen, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think that everything I, all the tests I did on this video are valid, um, since yeah, it seems like this TV is calibrated as far as the contrast and the um, brightness goes. So yeah, anyway, according to the 240p test suite, tested on both the Wii through Component and the Dreamcast the rest video. Um, yeah, it looks the same pretty much. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, stay tuned for the next video though where um, we're really gonna, yeah, put these TVs to their max like I said before. I think that'll be really interesting. Um, but yeah, so far the winner of this the round this round this video so far has been the Mitsubishi by far but yeah we'll see when we compare more component stuff yeah see how that compares to the Mitsubishi maybe the Sony will come out triumphant we'll see okay stay tuned bye